In this video, I'm gonna share with you how I use the TradingView platform to screen for and select companies to sell puts on. Let's do it. So starting at the foundation level, we need to do things. We need to put together a list of companies to sell puts on potentially, and then update our chart so that we can have some guidance on when or where we should sell those put values. So first things first, let's build out our stock screener here in the bottom left corner, pop that open and we have 17,000 companies to sift through. That's not gonna fly. We need to trim that list down and to do this, let's go into our filters area right here and adjust some filters. Clicking there, the first thing that I wanna do is change it from an index to any to the S&P 500. I wanna keep this very, very simple and basic, so only targeting blue chip companies in this example. This is where I started when I began as a trader. Next, we want the volume to be above a million and the average volume 30 day, let's say that's above a million as well. This helps us to ensure that there's liquidity in the stocks that we are trading, meaning the bid and ask spread should be minimal compared to companies with less volume each trading day. This will get us better bid ask spreads and tighter kind of price entries on our put selling. The next thing we wanna do is scroll down here all the way down. And we wanna make sure that this 50 day moving average is above the 200 day moving average right here in this next drop down, And we wanna do this because that's a golden cross setup. If the 50 day moves above the 200 day, it's a positive or bullish signal for a stock or the market. We don't want the opposites. We wanna get rid of any company where the 50 day is below the 200 day. Taking this one step further, we also wanna look at the price of the stock and the price of the stock should be above that 50 day moving average as well. So we'll tack that in there and just go above the SMA 50 to make sure that is also a super kind of bullish or uplifting trend for this company. Let's zoom out a second here and just say, okay, how many companies do we have now? We've got 181 matches. That's still quite a bit in order to pick from. So can we take this one step further? Yes, we can. The filters here. Let's look at the RSI. And we're going to add this to our chart in a second, but the relative strength index 14 right there, we want this to be above, let's say 50. And this means again, if it's crossing over 50 or it already has, we'll have to do some digging on the chart to see, but if it's above 50 for a company, generally it's looked upon as a kind of increase in momentum for the stock. So that's it's a positive buy signal uh, in some cases. So let's gonna put that one on there as well and see what happens. So we've shaved 10 more companies off of our potential list. And we're gonna do a little bit more here with the price and I'm going to say let's target companies above the $80 threshold. So we're going to look at the open here. And we're going to change the open to above and enter the value of $80. And once we do this, we can see we're down to 102 companies. Still too many, but we're going to add these to our watch list right now. And I'm going to show you how to filter them down with your chart next moving forward. Now what we want to do is add all these companies into our watch list all in one shot. So to do this, I recommend creating a new watch list in the top right hand corner. You can see mine says put selling. To do this, click the drop down arrow and just go down to create new list. It'll open up a new list for you and you'll be able to name it right away. If you already have one that you want to rename, you just go in here and say, I want to do this and just rename it. And you can even put a little star beside to make sure that's one of your favorites. And it'll show up right here as a quick little hitter. If I put one more up there, I'll show you again. The pump is going to show up there as well. You can flip back and forth between your watch list very easily. So now let's take these 102. I'm going to filter these down in a second and put them on the watch list before we go into the chart. So click in here at Apple or the top one, whatever it may be. Go control all or MacBook symbol all if you're on a Mac. And then you can right click and say add all to selected to a watch list. And boom, you're going to have this enormous watch list now of companies that fit the criteria that we found in our filter. If you want to save this filter for future use, what you can do is click right here and you can save screen as put selling. Again, this is not stock advice in any way. This is just education on how the TradingView platform works. Now you can filter your companies a little bit quicker for you to potentially trade on. The risk is on you in this disclaimer. If you're going to trade with this strategy, make sure you understand it. Make sure you understand how puts work before you go and execute. Next, we're going to drop down by closing the screener right here. And we want to go in here now. We want to augment this chart a little bit to make it a bit easier to see even further if we want to sell a put potentially on a stock or not. We need to get rid of this line chart. The line charts don't tell you enough data in my opinion. So to do this, we want to go into the line right there and go down to candlesticks. And I like to use candlesticks because I've been using them for 
four or five years right now, and I find they can tell a more complete picture of what's going on on the chart. If you wanna know how to read them and interpret them yourself, check out this video up here. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Now, we wanna add some indicators in here as well, some other signals to help us filter things out. So we wanna add in the indicators right here. We wanna look and say volume. Volume is helpful because it gives us a sense of if the stock is being bought more, bought less. Fading volume, rising volume can be uh, essential in determining where the stock may go next. We also wanna add in some moving averages. You can see that I've got some of these starred in here, but if you just search moving average, it will give that ability to you. And if you want to click on the star there, you can star them, add to favorites. You can take them and move them away from favorites. Update that list at your own prerogative. Let's go moving average simple though. Let's do two of them. They're going to come in as the nine day moving average. Both of them, we want to change them. If you can guess, they're going to be the 50 day with the length here under the inputs column. And I'm going to change the style to yellow. And I just go into style. I click on this little button here and I can change the uh, color of your line. I'm gonna click the X there and that's my 50 day moving average now. You can see up here it has changed and it'll change as you scroll through the days. I also wanna change the SMA nine by clicking on the gear icon right here again. I wanna change it to red and we're gonna change under the inputs to 200 for the 200 day moving average. We put these on the chart because they can help us interpret things a little bit easier and cleaner as we move through our stock list and we filter it down a bit more. Next, we're gonna add one called Bollinger Bands and Bollinger Bands are all about standard deviation. I like to use them because it gives you an idea of where the data is supposed to be. If you've never used Bollinger Bands before, the very, very high level uh, data on it is that in between this top red band, which I'm gonna change color on, and this bottom green band, the stock price is going to operate within that band. If you're on a two standard deviation with your Bollinger Band, 95% of the time. So if it goes outside that range, it's a clear signal that something groovy is happening, either positively or negatively, and you should pay attention. And to update these lines as well with their style, we're gonna go in here and take the basis off. I don't actually use the basis or the midpoint between the bands when I look to trade. Uh, if you want to, by all means, go ahead, you can use it. But I wanna change the upper to a baby blue and the lower to a baby blue so they really pop on the screen. And I can clearly see where my Bollinger Bands are relative to the stock price and the other moving averages that I have on the chart so far. And the last indicator I wanna put on here is the RSI, as we talked about, Relative Strength Index. Boom, baby, at the bottom down there. You can see that it is on, and we're gonna customize this as well just by going over here and clicking on the gear icon. I don't want an RSA, RSI based moving average. I don't want anything else down below. I just want the RSI line and it can stay purple right there. The input is 14 right there. Some people use nine, it's just personal preference in terms of what they're saying and how often that that's gonna get updated. At this time, everything on the chart is there that I use in my own trading for my own put selling in my portfolio. Nothing else has to be added. The only thing we have to do now is just trim the list a bit more and then really focus in on those, maybe let's say 10 to 15 companies that we really wanna look at trading and selling puts on. How I do this is last step is just only trade things that you know. Trade companies that you understand how they make money. If you don't understand it, I I just don't trade it because I don't know what the market is, don't know what the company it does, how they make money. It, it's just not comfortable for me to do that. So I go through my list now and I just filter out and say, hey, ABV, I don't know what you do. I know what Apple does. This one, I don't know. ADI all the way down to next one on the list. I know Caterpillar makes heavy machinery and construction equipment. The rest are all gone, delete those symbols, okay? Then I go down and say, CB, I don't know what you are. Cub Limited, no idea. And this is just, again, personal kind of experience. You wanna lean on what you know, what you don't know. Stay away from things that you don't know. I know EA down there is a video game company and they make kind of sports related stuff. So I'm gonna keep it there. And then I'm gonna go down General Electric. I can keep that one, I know what they do. I know what Google does. We'll keep Google on here. Class A and Class C. I don't think there's a really a difference here on the chart. We'll just to keep the Class A off, keep the Class C for now. Home Depot, I know. Uh, the rest down here, I'm going to keep IBM off. I know kind of what they do, but not really. I think their company's kind of evolved. We're going down, 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 down. A lot of these down to lows. I know what they are. Okay, and this is just me trimming it based on just, again, personal knowledge. I don't know, like I know some of these companies like Triple M, I don't just know what they do, what their business model is like. So how can I invest in something that I don't really know? That's that's kind of the standard response, I would say. Uh, so again, we'll go down here, all the way to NVIDIA. 
everybody's kind of recent favorite. Uh, again, Oracle, I know, but I don't know what they do. Like indefinitely, Procter & Gamble, I know the name, but I don't know what they do, how they make their money. We're going to keep going down, 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 down. Target, I know. I have a target, been to target, seen it in action. I can understand that. Test life, seen around. I know what they do. And waste management, I do know as well. My time in the construction industry. So there you go. Now I've cut this down. And this, again, this isn't every company on the S&P was in that initial list. There's other ones that are in there, but this, they don't have the technical charts set up based on our stock screeners, probably filter them out if you're not seeing them in here. But now I'm gonna take this more manageable list of how many we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Count along with me, 11, 12, 12, 12 it is. Okay, so now I would go in here and I look at these 12 and say, hey, maybe there's one really good technical setup that I would like to sell a put on. I'd have to confirm it with my options chain and make sure that I'm getting my 1% return, which is kind of my golden rule for options trading when I'm selling puts. But let's see what the best technical setup is in here based on what I'm seeing on the chart right now. Apple has a long run up here for a few months extended. It's kind of pulled back down, which is kind of nice to see. You never want to sell, or I never like to sell. Again, this isn't stock advice, but I don't like to sell puts on companies that have kind of pushed this limit all the way up just because there's the potential for pullbacks. You can see the kind of Apple makes its way up higher, right? And then super high, and then it kind of pulls back down. If you want to catch it on the pullback, if you can, let it do its thing, let it do its thing, be a little bit patient and catch it on the pullback down here. So this one, could be a good example of a area where you want to get in at with this kind of floor being right here. So I'm gonna leave this one on the list at 230. Maybe there's a floor down here as well. Maybe it's gonna catch around this area right there at 217. And the bottom floor again being down here at the 207 level for different price levels to price your strike at when selling this put. Let's go on to Airbnb. Uh just off the hop of the cuff here. I don't like Airbnb's chart setup right now. It's kind of been kind of moving downward, then kind of consolidating in an, up an area right around the 50-day moving average. It's really close to the 200-day moving average. I like this spread to be a little bit wider. It's kind of just been meandering. It's not really in a up-down trends kind of sideways. I'm going to take this one off for now, just delete it. Uh, Caterpillar, it's pushed up recently and it's going to pull back to the 50-day moving average. I would keep this one on and just look at where the options pricing is versus the price right here. Uh, EA, technically, don't like that setup at all. Crazy big spike in negative uh, volume. A lot of selling on this day. Big, big red candlestick that has engulfed pretty much the last one, two, three, four, five, five trading days and the trading that just happened. So I would really look to see this kind of stabilize before I jumped in. There is a golden cross right here with the 50 day crossing above the 200 day, but I would still kind of wait and see where this kind of went the next little bit. Maybe after earnings, I'd be a bit more inclined to see what direction it's going to go. So I'm going to take it off for now. GE, very, very strong holding pattern right here, right? We're in this range, very range bound. Uh, it would take a kind of big catalyst to get above this. It just broke above the 50-day moving average again, so I'm not too inclined. The rest of the chart looks okay, but just this being below the 50-day uh, and kind of bouncing around it, I need some kind of catalyst to again send this higher uh, indefinitely before getting in on a stock like this. So we're going to delete that one. Google. Also had a recent run up just like Apple did and it has pulled back down. See how this caught right here at this 50 day moving average? It kind of caught and didn't drop below it. It sort of did, but then it kind of bounced right back. That's a good sign to me. That's saying, okay, there's definitely support throughout the 50 day moving average. You have an RSI that dropped down as well, but it's slowly kind of creeping back up and just broke over 50 in our filter. That's how we got it included in this list. So I would keep Google on the list and look at the option chain, take it one step further. Home Depot had a run up potentially coming back down now. Do we have some area of support? Yeah, we have a little bit right around here, I'd say, 350. I maybe let this one run out a little bit longer. We have some building negative volume right here. See how this bar down here is moving up higher and kind of generally there's more, more selling happening. It's a doji candle, which means kind of indecision. So I would look at the next candle, see where it's gonna go next. If it does kind of keep trending, floating downward, I would look to maybe keep it at that 50 day level or a little bit lower on at the 324 level for selling the put. So I'm going to keep it off the chart right now just because of the technical setup. Lowe's, very similar to Home Depot. And why wouldn't they be kind of linked? They're the same kind of stock, same kind of industry, uh, same kind of reasoning there. I'm going to be a little bit out on this one until this kind of settles and maybe, maybe it runs up into earnings. But this one just isn't uh, bullish enough for me to kind of go ahead and look any further on it. NVIDIA, post-stock split. 
Nice run up, pull back, pull back again, right to that 50 day moving average. That's a great spot to be. You can see that again, there's building negative uh, bullish or bearish volume down here, which isn't great, but we do have the stock kind of moving its way forward a little bit higher. Um, this one at the low end of the Bollinger Band as well, which is kind of a good thing. Again, we have that confidence that 95% of the time it's gonna be inside the Bollinger Band. So I would keep NVIDIA on the list here as well. Target. Uh, it's floating around the 50 day. It's kind of been below it, around it. It's it's sort of catching there. I don't like how the 50 day and the 200 day are kind of converging. There's a long pronounced downtrend here. I don't feel like this one's super, super technically right for uh, me to get in on right now. So I would pass on that one. Tesla, I'm not sure why this one's actually on the list. We do have the 50 day below the 200 day. It hasn't actually crossed over. So I'm not sure how it filtered in and made the list. Uh, for that reason, I'm out. And waste management right now, crazy run up, right? Recently, we're right at earnings as well. RSI is extended. This one's probably, it's either going to go on another crazy heater. Uh, this may be kind of a stepping stone for it, but I don't like the fact that it's been outside this area the last little bit. Um, technically, I'm just going to keep this one off right now and just look at these four that I have here. Uh, maybe it goes a little bit higher, but there's also declining volume keeping it higher, which usually you don't see a decline in volume in the stock price moving higher. Just it's a weird thing to have happen. You usually have increasing volume as a stock moves up and when it decreases, kind of starts to fall back down a bit. So out of these four, I would say my favorite chart setup right now is between Google, NVIDIA, and Apple. So I'm going to take CAT off right now. And I would just say, I would say Apple right now. Yeah, I would go with Apple. And that's just only because I think there's more potential areas for it to kind of catch and land before it gets down to this 50 moving average. So if they wanted to be aggressive, I would go up and I would sell like right at the money, the like the 220 put, let's say, which would give you a little bit of barrier to entry at 220. Um, if I was being a bit more selective, I would go down to the second tier right here, maybe at 215 and check the stock, uh, the options pricing for that. And if I wanted to be super, super uh, risk adverse at this time, especially around earnings season, I would go out and I would just go down here to this 20 seven area right around the 50 day moving average, right? You can see 20696 on the left side of the screen for the 50 day moving average. And they also have the kind of the bounce off this before. Again, when stocks bounce off a certain price, it was anchored at the top of this green bar right here with a really strong amount of volume. And it went down and there was a big push for it to go down an even bigger bar of volume, but it didn't get through there. Meaning that this 207 area is a very strong point of uh, potential resistance and support as a floor. So it's not going to break through that on the downward spread, in my opinion, unless there's a crazy amount of volume. Like if this didn't get it done, and this is the biggest volume that's been on there since December, like we have a bunch of months here. It's, it's even going back further. It's, it's just a crazy amount of volume that day. I didn't push it down through that. I think this is a pretty safe bet to have a floor at 207. So I would set my price there if I was being super conservative as a, as an output seller. If you want to see me go through the options chain in depth using interactive brokers, make sure you check out this next video. Thank you for watching this one and subscribe if you got some value here today. My name is Andrew. Thanks for being here. Check you on the next one.